Major Dallas, you've been selected for a mission of the utmost importance. What mission? Save the world. Casting from the deep depths of cyberspace, this is Darn IT Podcast, Cybersecurity Made Simple, and I'm your host, Darnley G., CEO at Darn IT Group. TikTok, fame, and failure. Now, for those who know me, I've been asked this question by a lot of social media gurus, enthusiasts, about TikTok. And being in the position that I am in, in relation to cybersecurity, I must take a stance. I must take a opinion. Because personally speaking, it's something that I have to take into consideration when it comes to people's privacy a data collection, and most importantly, national security. Now, we all know what TikTok is, and for those who do not know what TikTok is, TikTok is an arising short video phenomenon social media service owned by ByteDance. They are a Beijing-based company. And it's used to create short clip, lip syncing, comedy, talent shows of the sorts. Uh, If anyone has been around or known about Vine, essentially this is a Vine killer, more like it. Now, this is kind of where I'm going to take a stance personally on TikTok. I don't encourage, well, I do encourage you to heed my warnings, but I don't encourage you to not use the platform altogether. This is just something that I must report on and something I must talk about. But um, a quick personal story is um, this was back in October of 2019 when I started seeing uh, TikTok increasing in its popularity in the information superhighway. And that's something that really intrigued me as someone who is on social media, who is on the Internet and growing I look at ways where I can maximize the benefit of having those platforms. But as I continue to read into the platform and kind of see the makeup of the platform, it really started to concern me. It started me to question things. And this is something that I implore each and every one of you listening to this podcast to do is to trust and always question or not to trust and always question apps that you install and use on your mobile devices every day. And people say, oh, well, darling, you're super paranoid. You, 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 you know, you have to trust things. And again, there is a balance and understand that being on social media you are in essence giving away some of your privacy. If you're more privacy conscientious, don't go on social media, period. Don't share information on the internet, period. But there's one thing or a few things on TikTok that really rubs me the wrong way, which is the reason why I'm doing this podcast in particular. The reason I don't really endorse TikTok is its connection with the Chinese government. And that's a cause for concern in the cybersecurity world. Now, even if you take a quick look at the TikTok's privacy policy, it may put some of your minds at ease, but it doesn't for me. And I'll explain in more detail. The, like I said earlier, the takeaway here is to mistrust most of the apps that we install even though it may be widely downloaded or maybe trusted or maybe not be trusted. This is not a bad mindset to have moving forward because you have to understand uh, if you're running a business, if you're part of a business, an organization, what have you, you need to understand that a lot of these applications can and may track you 
uh, in some way, shape or form. And TikTok is the epitome of a cybersecurity professional's nightmare. Businesses, governments are across North America and Europe and Asia are starting to ban TikTok usage and warning people to not use the app. Now, a few examples here, um, which goes beyond Darling's paranoia, is um, India. They banned TikTok usage in the country, citing privacy concerns due to the endangerment of their country's sovereignty. The United States Department of Defense has requested their employees to avoid TikTok due to the app conveying the location, image, and biometric data to its Chinese parent company, which is legally unable to refuse the shared data to the Chinese government, the Chinese communist government. So if the Chinese communist government asks TikTok to give them some information, they are legally compelled to give them that information. And seeing as this app is one of the most downloaded and most popular apps, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, you can kind of see where this is going. Uh, another report by Checkpoint Research released a report on multiple vulnerabilities to allow attackers or cyber criminals to compromise accounts, which they can obtain uh, content, they can uh, delete videos or reveal personal information. Another report by Clipboard Snooping was found after a Apple privacy feature exposed the app's behavior in iOS 14. Basically, the cut and paste data can be accessed by the app. Now, again, keep in mind that other apps can also do this. Not just it's not just uh, only in TikTok, but essentially the essentially the app could have uh, read anything that you copied and pasted on your iPhone device. Now, understand that TikTok has released and launched a transparency center to provide insights to the app source code and to give more details about its privacy and, and security. Now, um, it's to me anyways, they, they're just trying to give people more at ease about using their platform. But again, it still goes back to that there is still nothing there to stop them from giving the Chinese government the data and information they're asking for. What also concerns me is that the large amount of users on this platform are teenagers. They're the prime users, users of this app. But again, given the pandemic, there has been a growing number of adults and businesses that are interested in using this app due to this pandemic. And, and this is one of the biggest concerns I have because our younger generation or children are giving away their biometric data that's being stored and saved somewhere and could possibly, possibly be accessed by the, the Chinese communist country. And this is concerning because you need to take this into perspective is understand what sort of information you're giving on these videos. Uh, most of the time, these videos are taken inside house, outside the house, in the neighborhood, etc. And this gives a cyber criminals or B um, stalkers or child predators more information about you or your children and see that information can be accessible from a oppressive regime. Now, being in national security in my past life, this comes close to my heart because I can understand the sort of information leakage that can come from this sort of perspective. And this is the one number one reasons why I don't use the app altogether because of not only some privacy concerns, but national, national security concerns. Now, TikTok does use the same features that social media platforms such as YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook makes it so addictive. But however, as we know, uh, 
these platforms are misused across the table. A lot of situations where these platforms are accessed by a third party are sensitive information, personal information is being leaked, shared, compared, and analyzed to sources that are, were not asked or we were not consented on for that release. But I want to make something very clear here. There is no, even currently, as to this recording, there has been no international legal framework in place to protect countries, the, the country's consumer data, the same way within the country. So there is literally nothing and very little to prevent um, communist China to or any tyrannical governments to use it in information as they see fit. So keep in mind that, again, people say, well, what's the big deal? Think about everything going on in a video. As they say, a picture's worth a thousand words, a video is worth a million. And keep in mind that if your children use this, if your business owners or your partners use this app, keep in mind that the reason that for example, the Department of Defense in the United States does not want this to be on uh, government-owned devices is because this app could inevitably track um, and contain the data information. So if any of these government agents or even Canadian agents that are being spied on by the Chinese government, this just opens up a world of unknown variables to every government and business agency across North America, Europe, and Asia, because this platform can be used as a tool of spying. And that's something that has been on the radar, especially here in Canada, with the Huawei uh, CFO being uh, detained uh, due to some illegal activities overseas. Now, uh, sorry, legally detained, sorry, not illegally detained. She's been legally detained. Um, due to some violations of certain charters that were made from uh, the U.S. and um, European governments. And this, and the, again, this really brings down to, you can use this application, but I just want to warn you that you are releasing that information on the Internet. Now, either that be to communist China or to Google. It's really the same thing, but the fundamentals are still there. And TikTok has just happened to be the next extreme. Not the biggest of the evil. I think they're all the same between the information that Google may uh, farm and the Chinese government may farm. But at the end of the day, you must be aware that some of the things that you do post online can, may, and will be used against you in some way, shape, or form. It may be sold, it may be analyzed. So you need to be cognizant. You're welcome to use the application, but I always say is if you are conscientious of your data online, TikTok is probably not the app for you to use, regardless of all the benefits and the fun that may, may be in the application. Believe me, I looked at it, but at the end, it's just not worth the agony of a privacy breach in yourself, in your organization, that you cannot take the time, energy, and money in trying to fix that or may have a, a either an institution or a state-sponsored institution looking at you and your privacy and could potentially harm you or your organization. So thank you for listening to this next episode of darn it podcast with darn g if you like your show and want to know more please like or subscribe to our podcast remember look both ways before crossing the information superhighway safe computing everybody